So guys, today we're back with another bit of news information in kind of the solo Bitcoin mining space. And this is coming from the creator of the BitAx, which is Scott, and he's unveiling the Ember one here. So we had kind of rumors about this already, maybe around a month ago. We saw the Bitcoin Park or the 265 Foundation was actually sponsoring a bunch of projects. And one of the main projects in there was Ember One. And I believe it was a control board along with the Ember One. And because they hit a block around a month ago, whilst they were trying to do a sponsored stream for kind of all the foundations that they were raising awareness for, they've obviously taken some of that money and given it to the creators or the projects that they are sponsoring. And one of them was this Ember One Bitcoin solo lucky miner or lottery miner like the Bitax. So you can actually see it here and it is a ASIC board, basically, kind of the same as the Bitax, but there are some intricacies that you kind of have to work around with when you're working with more than one to three chips on a board, which is mainly that you're going to need and also alongside it, a control board to actually control all of them as well. It doesn't really pose that much problems with the Bitax just because it's one chip. But with these, you would probably need a control board as well. But I believe but I believe that is also sponsored along with the Ember One project, as in the board here, the ASIC board. They also have a budget, I guess, for the Ember One control board as well to go along with this. Now, judging by the amount of chips in here, you have 12. So you're going to be spending maybe $50 for each chip which brings your total up to around $600 just in the chips. That's the main kind of expense that you're looking for generally on ASIC miners is the chips beneath it. And that's going to set you back around $600. I know the Bitax Hex, which currently uses six chips in it, that goes for around $600. So you can expect this one to go for maybe upwards of $700 to 1000 Alternatively, there is a lot of people in the comments just saying buy a hash board because... It might be economically better just to buy a hash board for an S19. And I believe that they are using the S19J Pros. So the same ones that are in the Supra. And I think over time, there'll definitely be improvements onto kind of like S21 chips or S21 Pro chips. This is just kind of proof of concept at the moment or migrating over to other chips like a micro BT chip or those Intel chips that we talked about a couple of videos ago. So capable, I believe, of around three to four terahash. And the main reason that this video kind of spiked my interest again, obviously the creator of BitAx, but it's the fact that it's under 100 watts at four terahash. So mainly the BitAx is currently running, let's just say 15 to 20 watts, and that's on one chip. So let's do 15 times by 12, that gives us 180 watts if you had 12 consecutive bit axes running at the same time. So you can kind of reduce the amount of watts from 180 watts down to 100 watts. And it's kind of going to be like a very efficient GPU. If you've ever been in the GPU mining space, it would be like an A4000 from Nvidia that would mine or, or maybe a BC250, something like that, which is very efficient, but has a lot of hashing power. So you can obviously see it there and if we go over to the github here you can actually see the design files or the or the cad or pcb files and you can see ember one up there zero zero v2 so just looking off this uh, this is kind of some of the same architecture obviously as the bit axe and i don't think it's fully fleshed out necessarily there are talks about what power supply you want to go with, maybe a 12 volt instead of the 5 volt that we currently have for Bitaxe products. Here is where the chips will go. So you have one, two, three, and then three, three, and three. Holes in the middle to mount some sort of heat sink. That's going to be another kind of thing that I think people are going to play around with is the heat sinks on these. There's a lot of options to put different ones on, but you have to obviously cover all the chips as well and kind of evenly distribute it. But that's going to be interesting to see in the future. I don't actually know what these are. So if anyone can tell me in the comments what these are, uh, it leads me to believe they're voltage regulators, maybe. But these look massive for voltage regulating on a smaller chip. But let me know in the comments. 
So it says here, Ember One is based on BM1362 from Bitmain Antminer S19J Pro. It should reach about 3.5 terahash. There will be more Ember One variants in the future, including different ASICs. So definitely, they are working on S21, S21 Pro chips as well, S21 XP. So there will be a wide. Oh, so so it does say here they have gone with 12 to 14 input voltage instead of the standard ones that you had on the BitAx, which I believe is 5 currently. And they have that USB connection for data, so it's definitely going to be a different firmware, but we're kind of going to see how this takes form. So it looks like they've been initially, at least initial import is 4 months ago. So they've been working on it for the last 4 months. And also there's a lot of things going on in terms of the two contributors here that contribute to BitAx as well, so there's a lot of projects that they're involved in. And then I think maybe we're going to see the control board come out next from them. And they just made this one public, so the control board is probably coming a couple of weeks after that. But open sourcing it right now is always great. That's kind of the whole purpose of BitAx is to open source it. So anyone could take these files and start editing them themselves. They could produce it quicker than kind of the fully fleshed model. But we'll wait to see kind of a timeline for this as well. My price prediction probably from vendors is going to be around $1,000 to put this all together. But we'll see how it works out in the future. And kind of similarly, we see the Ubitax Gamma Turbo. I couldn't get a CAD file, but this is what I found online from Bitax Turkey. And if you scroll across, you can see the Bitax Gamma Turbo that we talked about previously in a couple of other videos. And this has an 800 at the top. A slightly bigger heat sink, I think, that is going to be the one displaying here. I think it's going to come out to this 60 millimeter fan and it's going to attach in here. And then you have the two chips right by there fan control by here, on and off button, LCD, and then power supply there with the Wi Fi going in there. And then if we look at the back, you can see where kind of the two chips are located right by here and right by here. And then some voltage regulator here to regulate both the voltages for both chips. So there's going to be loads of additions of that coming as well. We'll try to get our hands on one of them as quickly as possible, but I don't know what the timeline is for these either. And there's going to be a lot of videos with us making kind of accessories or additions to this, different heat sinks, different fans, different upgrades, like you see in previous videos for the Supra Max and the Gamma that we currently have. So a little update on kind of what we're mining. Currently we're solo mining to, I believe it's CK pool. Hash rate on the gamma, we haven't done any upgrades or overclockings for a while. We've kind of been away for a week. So all the videos that you just saw for the last week were kind of pre-recorded and put together. We still have our efficiency is actually pretty low right here. Hash rate is 1.39. We do have some things in the works, which are gonna be trying to do either a cooling block or immersion cooling. But you can see there, I had a lot of people commenting about the shares being rejected and we kind of got them down very quickly. So we're at around 100,000 shares with 0.04 rejected, so 38 rejected. And that's mainly, as I said in previous videos, kind of what you want. You want the least rejected shares that you can possibly have because you don't want your share hitting a massive difficulty and then being rejected. So best difficulty is still 728 million for the gamma. And then if we go over to the max, we still have a best difficulty of 207 million. Hash rate is around 440, efficiency not great, but over 100,000 shares for the max version, which is weird compared to the gamma, which means that it's not submitting as many shares. So we'll have to look into that because it appears to be submitting more shares, but maybe it's because the share difficulty is lower and that's why it's submitting more shares because it's a lower difficulty. And then you kind of see the same with the Supra as well. So the Max actually submitted the most shares, Supra submitted the least shares, but it has the least rejected as well. And sitting at around six to 700 giga hash on average, 655 on the Max version average is, average is 433. I'm gonna have to update the website so I can get averages on all of them like you see here. But that's just a quick little update. Obviously, if you guys want to check out solosatoshi.com, uh, go follow him on X because that's kind of my basic information or where to find information for Bitax products, new ones that are coming out. 
or at least solo mining stuff that is coming out. So solosatoshi.com on X, and you can just go to solosatoshi.com if you want to buy a bit X as well. But just a quick little update, show you kind of guys, to show you guys what's in the works coming in the future, probably within the next year, we'll see both the Kama Turbo and the Ember One come out. So let me know your thoughts on these in the comments and let me know your predictions on prices for the Ember One and the Gamma GT. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.